So welcome to another unboxing video from the playersaid.com. My name's Alexander, and today we're taking a look at something that's a little bit different from what's typically uh, shown on this channel. So today we're taking a look at the Europa Universalis, uh, the price of power. This is the deluxe edition. Uh, this is from a company called EJ Games. So Europa Universalis, you know it, you love it. A massive PC game by Paradox, you know. Uh, just a colossal game, very deep, very rich, about political control, economic development, technological explorations, religious influences. It's everything that you... It's said that those games are so deep, and they make such great uh, st strategy games on the PC, and there's been a trend of making these into board games recently. And I say trend, this is the first one of these that we have played, but they also, I know Academy Games is working on Stellaris, uh, and uh, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw other ones in the future. So, Europa Universalis, I cannot tell you how big this box is, and the other, I can't tell you how heavy this is. This is a 40 pound box, without question. Uh, this is about as heavy as at least Gloomhaven, and Gloomhaven's box is even taller than this. This is so heavy. We also uh, have uh, some of the extras that were available uh, through the Kickstarter. So we have metal coins, we have our extra bot deck for uh, um, doing bots in this. Additional set of dice, this is just more dice, we'll, we'll look at the dice here in a second. And then we also have uh, the big play mat. Uh, this is something that I'll whip this out here later on uh, just to kind of show you what this is. Um, it's a big play, man. We all know what that is, but it's a little bit different from some of the other ones that I've played on, so I wanted to kind of spotlight that uh, so that you can see what that is if you're interested. Okay. <laughs> Europa Universalis. It's so big. I, I, this is absolutely stunkin' massive. Obviously, this is going to be one of those longer Civ building style games. Uh, it says 90 minutes plus, so, you know, <laughs> what does that even mean? I, I don't know. Uh, so, included in this game is a grand campaign that you can take from 1444 all the way up to 1821. That's right, 1821. You can go from 1444 all the way up to, like, post-Napoleonics. So, like, just think about that. <laughs> this game is massive. Um... This deluxe version includes the five to six player expansion and the fourth age, which is the uh, post-Napoleonic stuff. So you can play this if you get the deluxe edition. Again, this is the deluxe edition. Up to six players and you can do kind of whatever you want with it. There's a ton of scenarios in here. Bunch of extras from the Kickstarter that we'll kind of go through here. I just wanted to show you this. I would try to be really careful because it's so massive. But you know, it's even little cute things like this, uh, this gold embossed title. That's fun. It doesn't do anything game-wise, but it's a, a very nice product on the surface. Okay. <laughs> Govern, trade, conspire, and conquer. Who, who doesn't want to do that in the game? Okay. So. Chock full. Like, this is... I've, I've actually got these rule books out, and I, like, could hardly put them back in again. So, there's a lot of uh, paper and rules in this. So there's some things that we're going to look through and consider. So we have a regular rule book. And this rule book, I will, is, if you're a war gamer, you'll probably be fine with this. Now, it has some really nice things like an extremely detailed setup with diagrams. But this is, a, it, this is not a short or small rule book. There's a lot of iconography, which will make this kind of go uh, a bit easier as you learn those. But this is nothing to bulk in. It really, really isn't. All sorts of different things. But again, it's a paradox game, so like you should expect that. No one's buying this being surprised at how detailed and hopefully how rich that it is. But yeah. Absolutely stunk and massive. And there's a two-player plus the bots version. There's a non-bot variant. We got these extra bots that we can uh, kind of take a look at and play around with. But just an absolute ton of stuff in here. That's just the rules. I mean, it's not a joke. It's 45 pages of rules. 
Th then we have this one here. There's the solo and the bot rules. So like, if you, if you wanted to play this solo, play the video game. I don't know why you would do this, but they give you this if you're interested in doing this. If you want to set this up and do this, and you thought, I, my, my Steam account's been locked because I've been saying mean things to children in chat rooms, like, you know, and you want to, still want to play this, here you go. You can play this solo with the bots. It is here. Then, <laughs> then, uh, we have not one, but two <laughs> scenario books. <laughs> like, this game is massive. I, I, I cannot stress that enough. Just how much is in here. This is just scenario, this is the first of two scenario books. And it tells you all the different uh, bot things of, of their hierarchies and how things go. Scenario. <laughs> uh, here's everything and all the different variants of making up decks and all this kind of setup stuff that you would expect. And once again, how the bots would play through each of those. So that's like some of the paper. Then, thank goodness, right? Here we go. So, a little bot flow chart. Was this a peace and battle flow chart? Great. But we have one, two, three, four, five, six identical play aids. And thank goodness for that. If you make a six player game and you only include like three or four play aids, and that, please don't do that. <laughs> really, don't do that. You might be like, who does that? Trust me, we've played a lot, and, and I kind of hate it. Uh, this is all just a little reference guide for all of the different realms that are printed on the map. On the back side, realms of the distant continent, so you've got like the kind of two halves of the map. Uh, and, and this section is like, uh, I'll show you, but it's a bunch of like smaller off-map things because they couldn't fit a whole globe uh, on the board. So, th so that's just like, the rules and references. Great. Uh, and this was uh, tying up all these, I think, when I got these out. So, little uh, play aids. So for the green play, you got Army 1, Army 2, Army 3, and then their fleets. These are single-sided. So you're gonna put which general they are and how much of what each of their armies has. And then you have a dude on the map that represents the army that's marching around, right? Think about almost like any of your Total War games as well. You have a big stack, what's in the stack, right? That's what these are. So there's one for all the different player colors. Well, two, I suppose, for all the different player colors. And the, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's look at the dice. And remember, we have the extra dice, which is really nice that that is an option, especially if you got a massive, this is a big game, right? The table creep is kind of stupid on this. It's huge. It's gonna be wonderful, but like, <laughs> you've gotta have a set of dice at one end of the table and another set of dice at the end of the table. It's that kind of a game. These are sealed for freshness. So you know they're not past their expiration date. Here you go. And these dice are wonderful. Here, let's uh, just put them on here so we can see them. There's all sorts of different types. Uh, these ones all seem to fit in a similar category here, and these ones here, and these ones here, and these ones, and these ones here. So, these dice are fully embossed and then inked, so they have a tactile nature to them. Always love it that's not like stickers or just like printed on. These are absolutely stunning. Kind of a regular D6, and this one's got some attrition on it maybe, I'm not really sure about that, and then these. I presume is all sorts of different eventy type things. I'm not, I'm not quite sure, but stunning. We got two sets of those. We really appreciate that. That's going to be very nice. Okay. And then we do have just a piece of kind of packaging foam. Uh, I don't know if we're ever going to get this back in this, this way, but we'll keep this handy just in case we can. Okay. And custom trays. Ooh. Okay, so these are the player, the main kind of player boards, and one of my favorite things that's occurring 
uh, over the past five years or so is that this is the, one of those dual layered recessed boards. So you're gonna put your discs in here and they're not gonna slide around anywhere. So I, I just, it makes, it's really nice. I don't know, it's just a really nice component. I really love it. I love it when games do that. So you're gonna have your little player board with your ruler on it and his advisors, different types of power that you can have, monarch power, military power, diplomatic power, administrative power. But then you'll also have like your little army display as well on whichever side that it goes on. So there's there's lots, again, like you, that's your, this is your one person's play stuff, right? You can have six and a huge map. It's good luck. <laughs> My table is not big enough for this. We'd have to play this uh, somewhere else. And we do have kind of like a status map. So this is gonna talk about like, there's this whole like papal thing that's going on. Imperial authority, and then a power struggle and the round stages of where you're on the round as well. And who, and who hasn't passed. So yes, one for each of the player colors, once again. And I believe these are, these are identical. All right, so let's take a look at some of these. This one's, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six. So, these are the piece, the playing pieces for each of the player colors. You remember we had uh, kind of the blue, not that one, the little blue army sheets and the blue board. Well, these are the blue player pieces. You get your own thing, Europa Universalis on here. These are made by Game Trays. Uh, they've done a lot of inserts for all the games that we really like, and these custom ones are always nice, just to help keep everything uh, sorted. This is really thick. <laughs> all right. So these are your army markers. So these are what's gonna, if I could, if I could get one out. And they progress, do they go through? Different technology types? Not, not really. But these are wonderful sculpted little miniatures. And those, uh, they do have a number on them for which army it is. So there's one, two, and three on the base. You have a navy. That's, that's lovely. And these are plastic, not resin. So they're not... They're, they're a little bit fragile. Be careful with them, but they're not. They're going to break by looking at them, is what I would say. Uh, we have some regular meeples with spears. I don't know. Little boats, probably for like utility fishing style boats. Some pawns and markers, some victory point markers, and then these uh, printed discs, which are for control, and probably go. You'll have some going on here but I know you have out ones out in like the provinces and stuff as well, I think, and then a bunch of cubes. So everyone has one of these, and I believe that they're identical in them, it's just that your colors are different. So let's pop the lid back on this. Those are lovely, but yeah, there's six of those. So it's nice, easy to just hand that out. After, don't have to sort pieces. Uh, this tray was like for the more kind of generic pieces. And there's a ton of them. Again, more of these meeples that we had in there, but these ones are orange. And we have some, I don't know what these are, but they look awesome. <laughs> little five-pointed stars, little flags. I don't know if these are for like NPC little countries or like rebellions and things, I don't know about that. Maybe you can go witch hunting, who knows? <laughs> I, I doubt that's true, but and there's, uh, there's a bunch of uh, black colored meeple zones with the little spears in them as well. And we have a first player token, which has a nice little uh, reclining renaissance man on there. Sealed for freshness. He didn't need to be. That was, uh, I felt like that's overkill. <laughs> but yeah, there's a lot of space in here for other components too. So maybe we'll be putting some of these other tokens in there. So we have this set of tokens. Oh my gosh, okay. So this is three punch boards and it's all different. So it's like coins, different uh, regional control markers, vassal markers, 
these are markers for the different player pieces. I think we can actually get rid of most of these because they're replaced by these. So that would be my understanding, and I really hope that that's true. This is the deluxe edition, so you're gonna. So if you see, look, we've got this with the with the torch and the fork. This is just one of those markers. So hopefully we can actually do away with a lot of the stuff. We'll be keeping these kinds of things, but we have the metal coins and we have the wooden pieces. So hopefully we can reduce what we actually keep from this. That would be great. Uh, there's three sheets and I'm not gonna open those because hopefully we don't need to make a big mess of those. So then we have the boards. So, and the boards are dual sided and that's important because there's two major different scenario setups or campaign setups. I think there's like a 1444 one and then like a 16 something. Yeah, so this is the, this is like the beginning is the 1444 setup up here. So you're gonna have, you know, this guy off to the side which has the victory track on here. And this was those, um, those distant areas that were listed on that one play aid. So you got the main board of like Europe and the Mediterranean and North Africa. So this is our map, right? Massive. <laughs> Then we have this off to the side, which has our kind of off map regions. Again, you couldn't have a map this big, but there's the flip side of it, which is the 1618 setup. That was, that's the difference. So the flip side of this, uh, well, that's, they've printed it upside down on purpose to flip it the other way. This is the 1618 setup, very different setup. So you can play one of these shorter scenarios or you do have the option in this deluxe version for the grand campaign, which would be nuts. It would be great, but like, that's, that's, a, that's a long time. I imagine that takes a very, very long time to play. There is also, the rest of the box is 10 trillion cards. Uh, so there's a, just a ton of cards in here, and I think these are broken down by ages. Uh, which are signified on the back. These, this is the first age that goes all the way to the fourth age, which I think is, I think, the, I don't know if that's unique to this particular edition, but the back of the box did call out, hey, this has the fourth age in it. So a million different cards in here. And those are all sorts of events and items and everything in between. So the last thing that I'm gonna show you, because and I don't even know if I can fit this on my table, is this rollout mat. Now, I think size-wise, this is slightly bigger than, uh, I think it's slightly bigger than the, uh, the folding boards. Here, let me double check just to make sure. I really hope, mm, yeah, it is. It is probably, I don't know, 15 or 20% bigger, maybe. It's not a ton bigger, but it's bigger enough where I will probably always use this. Uh, and this is the 1444 setup, and you guessed it, on the back, they've got the other setup. Now, what's really important to note here is when we play a lot of, we've played on like play mats before. Uh, I was expecting it, Grant was like, hey, we got play mat. I was expecting it to be neoprene. And I don't know what they call this, but when you say neoprene to me, I was expecting like the really thick mouse pad material. And this is not, you can see that this is a much thinner, um, I, don't, I, I don't know my materials. But this is like, and it's a little bit, has a little bit of kind of bounce in it. It's not like foam, but this is a, this is a much thinner material. But as such, it, it has really, really detailed, uh, quite crisp printing, at least on the uh, 1444 side. Uh, this side has a texture to it. It's clearly uh, like a two-sided a two material and they've just been able to get it to print on the back, but it, this has a different feel. This is quite a rough texture, you know, 
like it was intended to be like a, like a mat of something. Uh, but they've got printing on both sides and it's great. And I just think, yeah, this is probably what we'll use because this is really, I also feel like um, this is a much lighter color uh, scheme. Here, let me, sh let, me, let me show that. Like I'm, I look at this neoprene mat, it's not neoprene, I understand that. These, the light colors and the, the strong contrast with that, for me, is easier to, to look at and gauge uh, than this. If you look, these colors are much darker and I have a, I have a harder time reading the, the, the black words on it and it being quite, uh, quite a dark scheme. Whereas this is, uh, this is much higher contrast, much easier for me to read. So for ease of use, I will always use this playmat pretty much. I, I mean, unless something kind of crazy was happening or I was just like playing around, but like this darker palette it makes a big difference, it really does. And uh, I, I find this harder to read than I do this. But you know, everyone's different, so I'd be interested to hear what people think about that, that's for sure. But I am extremely excited to play this. We actually have plans to play this. This is on the docket for, I think, March. Uh, we're going to Basement Con, and we will play this with lots of people. And I really, really hope that it's good. <laughs> uh, again, it's. It's Universalis, it's a paradox game, so I expect it to be pretty detailed and for there to be lots of moving parts. But, I don't know, we play with a great group and I want it to be rich and interesting and fun and engaging and I have very high hopes for this. It looks stunning. <laughs> uh, so, Europa Universalis. This is the deluxe edition. And remember, we have like the metal coins as well. So, let me just crack those open for you. I, I had even forgotten that we'd, I was gonna get those out. So this is, again, I hope this is gonna replace all of that, a lot of that cardboard. So I'm gonna punch some of it for like the uh, control markers, but these are, these are wonderful. And they're, they're different. So we have these copper coins, and they have, here you can see, they're quite, bu quite busy. But they have, a, they have a head and a tail size on them. Feel great. And then we have the silver ones, which have a, like a line on them. Look at that. Those are great. Who doesn't want that? We always joke about the metal coins. And then uh, these nice, lovely, lovely gold ones. Right. So I'm hoping that we can uh, use those. We'll put those, I presume, though, but we'll stick them in here. We'll ditch those wooden ones. The cardboard ones, wooden ones, come on now. And yeah, there's a little, there's a, a, an extra bot deck. So I think these are just extra cards you can play into the bot decks that already exist, just to make them a bit more varied. But I don't know enough about this to speak to this honestly. But yeah, absolutely off the maps production. Uh, all the bells and whistles, and it's just wonderful to see it come to fruition. And I'm very excited to try this. This is a game that you will hear more about on our channel. We will play this and we will review it. Um, so appreciate you very much for tuning in. I know this was a long one. There was a ton in it. Uh, but uh, Europa Universalis from EJ Games. Check it out if it's something you're interested in, but appreciate you very much for tuning in. I've been Alexander from ThePlayersAid.com.